Good morning. Good morning to those of you who are here in the church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings today present us the very comforting image of God as a loving, compassionate, and providential shepherd for his people. He is the good shepherd who is always with us, who will always guide us, care for us, heal us, strengthen us, and help us get through those times when our plans do not work out as hoped. But even more than that, our Good Shepherd has his own plan for our lives and will work with us to live out his plans for our lives. Today, there will be a second collection after communion for the Missionary Diocese of Jackson, Mississippi, that has asked for our help. There are special envelopes in the pews for this collection. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Roberto. The celebrant for this Mass is Father, Father Francis. <laughs> and our preacher is Father Roberto. Let us begin our Mass by singing 462. I heard the voice of Jesus. 462. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. Jesus saw the crowds, and his heart was moved with pity, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. God promises, I myself will shepherd my people. 
I will guide them and send good shepherds to them. Let us open our hearts then to the word of God and to the sacrament of Christ present with us in his body and blood and as we gather as his body and let us trusting, trusting in him, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. servants and mercifully increase the gifts, the gifts of your grace that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Seven forty four, seven four four. of my life 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God. In one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it, He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Hear now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, His heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. A good friend of mine and his wife have worked very hard for many, many years. 
And beginning several years ago, they began to think about, to dream about, to hope for, and to plan their retirement when they could simply enjoy life and their children and grandchildren. Well, unfortunately, two years ago, my friend John had a freak accident. He fell down in his own backyard, he hit his head, and he broke his neck. And so since then, for these last two years, he has been paralyzed from the chest down. I just saw him a couple of weeks ago on my vacation, and he's doing okay for the most part. He's able to raise his hands up to about there and uh, his arms, and, and he can move his hands, but it takes a lot of effort. It's been a lot of physical therapy for him to get to that point. He has a motorized wheelchair that he can control a little bit to help him get around. But as you can imagine, he and his family have suffered tremendously these last two years. And they're still trying to understand, trying to accept this new reality in their lives. And as far as all their hopes and dreams, their plans for retirement, for enjoying life, those have been not only changed, they have been totally destroyed. When we experience a tragedy such as this in our lives, when our hopes and dreams and plans fall apart, it can be a time of great doubt in ourselves, in others, in life, and in God. And that can lead us to resentment, to depression, and even to despair. There are no easy answers for us at these times, but what can be a lifesaver for us is to have a deep, deep and committed belief in what our readings resoundingly proclaim to us today, that our God is a loving, compassionate, and providential good shepherd. In other words, that our God is a good shepherd who is always with us, who will always guide us, care for us, heal us, strengthen us, and somehow help us get through those times of crisis in our lives. We see this in our first reading today, when God speaks to his people through the prophet Jeremiah. And he tells his people that even though their leaders have failed them by not caring for them, misleading them, and dispersing them, he himself will care for his people, and he will send them a true shepherd who will govern them with wisdom, with justice, and compassion. How important it is for us in our own days to hold on to this promise of God. In our own days, when our own religious and political leaders have often failed us, have misled us, have divided us. My brothers and sisters, God is telling you and me today that no matter what our leaders do or don't do for us, that he himself will never ever fail us. He will always lead us and care for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well then, today's gospel beautifully shows how Jesus fulfilled God's ancient promise to send his people a true shepherd. As we just heard in our gospel, instead of being annoyed or angry uh, with the, the, by the needy crowd's unexpected presence and demands, Jesus, his first reaction is compassion. He reacts with compassion and reaches out to them with tender love and ministers to their needs. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is our true and good shepherd, whom the Father sent to us 2,000 years ago and who continues to reach out to us today with that same tenderness, with that same compassion, especially, especially when we are hurting, when we are disoriented or devastated by life's twists and turns. 
Now, keeping in mind this image of God as our loving, compassionate, and providential shepherd that our scriptures present to us today, I'd like us to go back and look at my friend John's situation and see how that can help us when our own plans fall apart. So as I mentioned earlier, John and his wife had been making plans for several years for their retirement. So the first thing I want to say is that it is absolutely fine for you and me to make our own plans, to have hopes and dreams for ourselves or our loved ones. Whatever those plans might be, go ahead and make those plans. Yes, go ahead and do that. But always keep in mind that the Lord is our shepherd who loves us and knows what is best for us and wants that for us in our lives. So always when you are making your plans for the future, pray. Bring God into that planning process and pray, Lord, if it is your will, if it's your will, let these plans work out for me. Then at some point what we have to do is let go of the results, let go of the outcome and trust that no matter what happens, no matter how things turns, turn out, God loves you and he will be there with you and for you. Okay, let's go back to my friend John's situation. So as I said two years ago, he had this terrible accident. He ends up paralyzed and all of his and his wife's plans are wiped out. I think it's important for me to repeat right here something I said just a couple of weeks ago when I last preached, what I've said before on a number of occasions. God, God never, never wants bad things to happen to us. He never causes bad things. He never sends bad things to punish us. He does not punish us. He does not want bad things to happen. He allows things to happen. He allows bad things to happen. That's a whole other homily for some other day. But he never wants them. He never sends them to us to punish us. John's accident was no one's fault. As far as I know, John was not drunk or high or careless in any way when he had his accident. Um, so uh, it's simply part of life in this imperfect world of ours. Accidents simply happen now and then. But let's say that it was John's fault. Let's say that he was drunk or high or careless or all three of those things. The amazing thing about God, our good, loving, and compassionate shepherd, and the most important thing I want to say to you today is that God never stops loving us. He never gives up on us. Even when we make foolish or sinful mistakes, God never, never says to us, you idiot, because you were drunk or high or careless or sinful, you are now on your own. Good luck, I'm out of here. He will never, never say that to us. On the contrary, what God will always say to us at those moments when our plans and our lives fall apart. And again, even if it is because of our own foolishness or sinfulness, God will always say to us something like this, okay, you blew it. You really messed up this time, but I am still here with you. Let's see what you can learn from your mistake, from your bad choice, from your sin, or from this accident. What can you learn from it? And then let us fix it if we can, and then let's move forward together. That's what our God says to us. Learn from it, try to fix it if you can, and then let's move forward together. I will help you get up and move on in your life. So, during my recent visit to my friend John, he told me that he and his family in these last two years have had their times of doubts, times of depression and despair, and that is entirely understandable. But I'm happy to say that at this point, they seem to be working with the Lord and they are slowly, slowly moving forward together. 
in their lives. So my brothers and sisters, again, go ahead, have hopes and dreams for yourselves and for your loved ones. Go ahead and make plans for the future, but don't forget to bring God into those plans. Don't forget to bring him into those plans. Trust that he knows and wants what is best for you. And most importantly, most importantly, remember that whatever twists and turns life will take for you, you have a good shepherd who will always love you, who will always be there for you and with you, and who will help you get through no matter what happens. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus is our true shepherd who continually intercedes for us in the Father's presence. Therefore, we confidently bring to God our prayers. In thanksgiving for the many times Jesus guided, cared for, healed, and strengthened us as our good shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us who have the grace to follow and trust in the Lord's plan for our lives, especially those whose dreams, hopes, and plans have been unfulfilled, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government and religious leaders and all those called to shepherd God's people, especially Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop. May they attend with compassion to the needs of all those they serve, especially the poor and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those impacted by the recent building collapse in Florida and those suffering from severe weather, fires, floods, and natural disasters throughout the world, may our governments work together to help them and take better care of the earth. We pray to the Lord. 
For those who are unvaccinated, that they may be protected and that they would receive their vaccinations for the sake of the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For Emilia and Soledad Serrano, for the eternal repose of their souls, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the intentions we hold in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending us, your Son, to be our true and good shepherd. May he continue to feed us and lead us to you and to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So a reminder, there will be a second collection after Holy Communion for the intention of the missionary diocese in Jackson, Mississippi. Thank you. 465, because the Lord is my shepherd. 465. Beloved brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. 
O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice br brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that we may each of what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, <clears throat> he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, and we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, we pray, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Especially at this Holy Mass, we lift up to you the souls of Emilio and <clears throat> Emilio and um, uh, Soledad Serrano. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And to all who are here present and all those participating on live stream, uh, let us turn now to one another and share the sign of the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, my Jesus. I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I, I cannot, cannot at this, at this moment, moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Four sixty three. Fly like a bird. Four six three. Like a bird, 
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and God, lead, lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated. As was announced before Mass today and in the bulletin last week, I'm going to ask the ushers to wait until I finish uh, talking about the collection. We're going to have a special collection today uh, for the Missionary Diocese of Jackson, Mississippi. Normally the collection we do once a year for missionaries in foreign lands, uh, but this year the Archdiocese is asking us to help one of our own dioceses here in the United States. So the bishop Normally we have a speaker, but the bishop from there wrote a letter instead of sending us a speaker. So I'm going to read that letter to you. It's, it's going to take just a few minutes, um, and it's from the Bishop of, Dias, of the Diocese of Jackson. Dear friends in Christ, I am Bishop Joseph Kopax of the Diocese of Jackson, Mississippi, and I am grateful to Archbishop Gomez and the Mission Office of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles for allowing the Diocese of Jackson, Mississippi, to participate in the Mission Cooperative. We are a mission diocese in the Deep South where Catholics are a mere 2 to 3 percent of the state's population. Our diocese has the largest territory of any Catholic diocese east of the Mississippi River, approximately 38,000 miles, square miles, encompassing 65 counties. A small Catholic population over this expansive territory creates a pastoral landscape of many smaller rural parishes 
who struggle to maintain their mission and ministries. In fact, there are some counties where the Diocese of Jackson does not even have a mission station. In addition, we are embedded in the state that consistently ranks at the bottom of national poverty indicators with respect to wages, health, and access to health care, education, and healthy food choices. Under these circumstances, the Diocese of Jackson benefits enormously from the generosity bestowed through the annual mission appeal. The pandemic, which has had a more adverse impact upon the poor and the marginalized, has exacerbated further the pastoral realities already straining under financial pressures in normal times. Many of our rural parishes are experiencing a significant loss of income because most of the parishioners are immigrants who work in the massive poultry industry in Mississippi. The gravity of their vulnerability to the COVID virus is well documented and some of the large plants closed their doors because of the high rate of infections. In turn, the parishes and the Diocese of Jackson are reaching out to families whose breadwinner has lost their job because of the impact of the virus or because of the downturn in the economy. Since June 2020, our diocesan parishes opened under careful protocols, but for the last 11 months, the number of parishioners who can attend Mass in person has been reduced considerably. When speaking with our pastors and lay leadership who have experienced the harshest impact, it is apparent that they will need the assistance of the Diocese of Jackson through the mission appeal to soften the impact of the pandemic. I and all the leadership in the Diocese of Jackson, ordained and lay, thank you for your attention, prayer, and generosity during these very challenging times for all of us and especially for the poor and marginalized. Sincerely yours in Christ, Bishop Joseph Kopax, Diocese of Jackson. There are envelopes, special envelopes for this particular collection in the pews that you're welcome to use, or if you just prefer to put whatever you have in the baskets, that's fine. But if you can, use those envelopes. And I ask ushers now to take that collection. And as they do so, I will continue with our regular announcements for our parish. I see that just about everybody here is wearing a mask, and so as of last night at 11.59, our county, Los Angeles County, has required us to use masks, whatever our vaccination status is, when we're, whenever we're indoors at a meeting. So that means mask, any kind of meeting here, in the, in the parish you, and anywhere else in Los Angeles County, you must wear a mask whether you've been vaccinated or not. So please cooperate with that. And uh, let's hope that the surge uh, dies down uh, quickly and let us uh, pray for and, and gently ask and suggest that those who are not vaccinated, please to do so. It is the best way to get over the pandemic. So please, if you know somebody that's not vaccinated, pray for them and gently, gently uh, suggest that they get vaccinated for the common good, for the good of all of us. This year, we Dominicans celebrate the 800th anniversary of the death of St. Dominic, our founder and the patron saint of our parish here. Over the next several weeks, therefore, I will include information in the parish bulletin as well as, as at the end of the packets that those of you online receive in the emails. Uh, about St. Dominic's life and his death. And this week, that message is about his birth and his early years. So please, in the coming weeks, uh, check out that information about St. Dominic, our great founder and great saint. Thank you for your generosity to this collection. Thanks to all of you for coming to Mass. Thanks to our many ministers for your generous service to us week after week. God bless you. Peace and the peace.
blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks to God. Five, three, three. Praise the Lord, ye heavens. Five, three, three. Yeah. 